Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds Channel. Let's take a look this week at the um, weather report for the days of March 25th through 31st. So it's the last week of March that we got here, and the big news of the week is we are going into eclipse season, and that's actually today on Monday. Uh, we have this full moon at about six degrees Libra in a lunar eclipse. Um, opposite the sun and Aries. So that's the main thing I'm going to be talking about today. There's actually only a couple other little things to talk about this week, so it might not be one of the longest vlogs going this time. But just a little business first. The Astrological Wings Channel is a free video blog that I offer every week on YouTube, a YouTube channel. If you have a YouTube account, please become a follower if you like what you see. And remember to turn your notifications on, and that way you will know when the blog is posted. And it was a podcast long before it was a video um, a blog, so remember it's still available on podcasts too. There's really not really much need to watch the video, and the podcast will free you up to do other things. So just look it up on your favorite podcast, the Astrological Winds Channel. You should be able to find it out there. It's distributed through Buzzsprout. Um, also, has a, Astrological Wings Channel has an Instagram page where I also post the link every week. So if you have an Instagram account, once again, become a follower. Sometimes I post some extra information during the week on Instagram. I also post it on my private Facebook account, which is Matthew with two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. So if you want to private friend me, and you will see that come up on your newsreel every week. And the one place you can always find it, no matter what, um, besides the YouTube, is on my website. And that's www.astrologicalwinds.com. That's all one name, um, astrologicalwinds.com. And it's it, all the blogs are embedded there. Just look at the blog tab at, at the top. And remember, it is a free service. So what I ask everyone to do is please pass the link along to someone else you might think might be interested in it. And if you can do that multiple times, that'd be great. There's a lot of people who believe in astrology, helping them out. And, you know, so please, you know, give them the opportunity to, to actually um, take a look at the blog. And the other, other great way you can support me is I am a professional astrologer. I've been doing charts for over 20 years professionally. I was trained for seven years. Um, all my reading type services are available at a menu on the website, www.astrologicalwinds.com. Um, you know, open up a dialogue with me. Um, there's a way to email me on a link there. My email is mattthe two three at gmail.com. I will work with you with your budget and stuff too. So, um, you know, just, uh, you know, when you need that, or if you know someone you need that, that's the best way to support me. Um, okay, let's get into this. Um, so the big event of the week is we are going into the first eclipse season of the year. And if, you know, if you know astrology, a little bit and if you don't remember don't get caught on the terms we want to hear what you know what it's mainly about in between but if you know astrology a little bit that's you know the eclipse seasons start when we get to a point where the um the nodes and the moon and sun are in the same zone so the nodes have been in that aries libra zone for the past year about you know and so when the moon, the full moons get to those Aries Libra zones and the sun gets to the Aries Libra zones. That's when we're going to have our eclipse season. So we have the sun now in Aries and this full moon in Libra and they oppose one another. So that's the full moon. The moon is opposite the sun whenever the, um, when there's ever, there's a full moon and it's a very energizing transit and, you know, can even energize stuff like events big events natural disasters things like that there's a bigger pull of gravity but what's it on when it's on the aries libra axis it's all about relationships that's what's really going to come into focus in this full moon and 
can cause tension or stress or can bring people together. The oppositions can, you know, is, is very individualized and the energy between you and another usually, and you get to see the reflection of each other through your interactions with each other. So this full moon is on that relationship axis and, and what's it all about? You know, the full moon in Libra, what does that want? You know, Libra is the first sign of the Zodiac that is on the relationship side of the Zodiac. So it's the individual reaching out to another and creating that contact relationship, something that's very necessary for all humans, a basic need of society um, for relationship to occur and to be able to get along with one another, right? So what Libra wants to do is it really does want that to happen. The Libra energy wants people to get along. It wants, it wants, um, grace and elegance and beauty in relationships love it's looking for love in relationships you know and and libra learns about itself through relationships through the reflection of others and libra not only is interested in that with relationships but is interested in fairness in relationships too that there's an equality within the relationships that there's give and take and and so it's like about harmony in relationships. It's about beautifying relationships. And it's about making people comfortable even in the surroundings that they're in by creating harmony and beauty in relationships. There's a lot of creativity in Libra. The ruler of this full moon is Venus and she is the ruler of creativity. And I'll get a little bit into how she's affecting that this full moon in a little bit too. But so, you know, that's what Libra is looking for. And especially with the moon emotionally, you know, it, it wants to have emotional harmony. It wants, it wants when it feels out of harmony, it wants to make connection with others to find like a diplomatic way of coming to an agreement. That's why Libras are very good at things like diplomacy you know, helping work out agreements because, you know, knows how to give and take and knows how to do that with grace. So like it's looking to do that, but, you know, it runs into the airy sun and the airy sun is the beginning of the zodiac on the personal side. So like I said last week, when the sun went into Aries in the blog last week, we, you know, it's, it's one of the most egotistical signs because it's all about the self. It's all about existing in the present and and the first instinct of surviving you know literally so you know so like it's it, it becomes very like self-wrapped up in its interests very subjective in its viewpoints very self-motivated many times insensitive to the effect we have on others so that's where libra has the problem with aries it's like whoa 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 you know like have you thought about anybody else in your plans and you know moving forward and, and aries is always looking for some kind of new adventure something that's like gonna you know really motivate it and push it on that level so that you know so you know a lot of times like i said that can get so self-wrapped up that it can really make waves in relationships so that's where the tension of this full moon is and and a lot of it has to do with finding the correct balance too between those two things like the need for the individual the airy sun to be who you are and to be able to feel like you know your life is exciting and stimulating and you're doing things you like and and then also the to find that within to still have harmonious relationships even within being you know having the honor for your own life and your own self so it's really really um can be drawn together and finding that right balance is ve is very much easier to do during this too despite the stress that the opposition has if we're in balance we can find how we can be in a relationship 
and not sacrifice too much of ourselves and, and be in a relationship and remain sensitive to others too. And, and that's what ideally we work this. Now it's a lunar eclipse too. Okay. So that ups it even more. And, you know, eclipses are turning points. When an eclipse hits your chart or the world somewhere, it can manifest as an event that literally makes you make a turn in your life that, you know, you might've been on one trail for a long time and you go off onto another trail completely and you're not going back. Something very significant can change your life's whole patterns is my point. And so with a lunar eclipse, many times it's not so much outer events that are coming at you. So the lunar eclipse is more reflective. It's that sun for the full moon is reflecting the light of the sun. It's lighting up our subconscious so that we can see it more clearly. Other people can see it more clearly. And that's why people act out during the full moon. A lot of the stuff they hold deep within gets released during the full moon because it can be seen more clearly by others and by self. So like, so that lunar eclipse, right? What it really is doing is like really having us think hard about what we want in relationship and things like that. And so because we're thinking that we can start to see events manifest. It's not lunar eclipses. A lot of times, like my point is, is the event isn't going to happen to us. We are actually being part of the creative process of creating an event that matches the eclipse energy. And why? Because we're thinking about that thing a lot. And, and that starts the wheels turning of creative form, being able to crystallize into something that will manifest in the real world. So when we start in Libra, we're going to be thinking about relationships a lot, you know, and, and it can be tough, you know, because in the old relationships, you know, we may be like looking at things like, you know, especially with, in, with an eclipse, like I need to move on. This is where I need to make that turn in life and move forward in another direction completely. And so like, this is so much about assessing relationships on that level of like, you know, where am I really being honored and where am I being like, you know, just pushed aside by someone else's like, you know, desires and needs and where can I separate myself and create some new relationship space. So like you can, when we're thinking about the stuff, it will help it manifest is, is my point. And that's when lunar eclipses do. They're, they're driven from within more. We see things more. Other people see things more. We see our relationships with other people more in a more clear light and maybe like, okay, time to like, you know, separate, move on or redefine how that relationship is. And wow, like now, new things, new adventures are opening up for me, Sun and Aries, in other relationships, if I can stay in that balance and honor that energy. So, so it's a very, very, very interesting full moon because the opportunity is there with this eclipse for us to really create a lot of these events that can help us do that separation and move on to where we want to go. Now, interestingly enough, too, the moon is coming off a trine to Pluto. That's the only other aspect the moon is making. And that brings depth and passion and feeling into our emotional experiences within ourselves and with others. So, like, you know, for relationships that are new ones, this is going to be like really passionate, intense, almost otherworldly connection. And it could be very like romantic, sexual, deep energy on that level, or it can just be other relationships that are really bringing up deep energy within each party for them to process and help change themselves and change each other. So it's very strong dynamic energy, creative power that we have. 
an ability to really focus in strong with this energy and really crystallize a lot of it. So, so, and, and like I said, it is, that is one that it's separating from. So it's already in there as part of this. And I think that, you know, that's going to play in more with the Venus part of this. Now, Venus is the ruler of this, of this full moon because she's the ruler of Libra. And where is she? I said to you guys last week, she's in Pisces. She's very happy right now. She's exalted in Pisces, likes to be there. Venus in Pisces and the Libra energy uh, are very, very similar energies in many ways. They're like softer, harmonious, in touch and sensitive with others. Venus likes both these signs is my point. The, the sign the full moon is in. And the, and the sign she's in as being ruler of that full moon. And so what I really think can happen here is we can really find some beautiful ideal relationships for ourselves right now. Like things that people that appeal to our ideals. And it can be romantic for sure. Pisces and Libra are both very romantic signs. There's no question about that. But like there's no question we can create partnerships that are very ideal and like open up a lot of creativity within us, a lot of like um, um, compassion and higher unconditional love type energy um, and bringing that out to the collective. And, and what's interesting is what did Venus just do, right? It conjuncted Saturn last week, also in Pisces. So here, it won't allow the Pisces energy to just kind of float off and dissipate as an ideal. Saturn's grounding it. It's like, yes, if you find those right people, you can stabilize with people who have similar ideals to you and create long-term structure and form. So this is just great, great energy. I think working together, they've got so much of balance. And then to top that off, Venus is sextiling Jupiter too in Taurus. So here's, this is just one of the best transits there is. Venus in a really strong sign, right? In the full moon, in in one of Venus's signs, and then it's sextiling Jupiter, the other beneficial planet, in the other sign that Venus rules. How cool is that? This is just like three incredibly positive energies for taking opportunity in relationships now, especially with people that you know you know and you're familiar with, and the relationships are getting like you know more expanded and they're getting like more grounded and there's benefits like Taurus and Pisces giving benefits to each other, getting benefits from one another, can come through on material ways, can come through like in nurturing emotional ways, can come through through creative ways, very, very supportive, can get financial benefits from this, you know, but just such a good energy. And to top all that off, Venus is also sextiling Ceres, the mother energy, the mother energy asteroid. And so Venus is literally on the midpoint of Ceres and Jupiter and Ceres and Capricorn. And it's like people want to nurture these new relationships. They want to bring stability. They want to bring production. They want to bring fruitful endeavors. Once again, sensuality and sensitivity. If it's like a sexual romantic relationship, really being there for another person, like really caring. And then like in Capricorn too, that fits back into the airy sun part where you're like, not only am I doing the relationship thing, but I'm allowing the individual to still stand for themselves. And I'm actually giving the individual more wisdom and knowledge to make wise decisions for themselves. That like, it's almost like instead of feed, um, feeding someone, giving them the means or showing them how to feed themselves. So like, you know, instead of giving them the fish, you teach them how to fish. That's kind of like the, the series in Capricorn energy with the Venus and Jupiter. And it benefits everybody. 
I really think this is a potentially really positive full moon eclipse for positive change to come into our lives. And it's all about our mindset because it's that lunar eclipse and we are like thinking about these things and it is going to be coming through relationships and it's going to show us stuff about ourselves, show us stuff about other people and help us decide where we want to go. And new relationships can be very hitting onto our ideals, bring stability, bring benefits, bring care and nurturing. It's very interesting. This is all lining up, but but at the same time, you know, we have to remember that, you know, people who, you know, are from our past or who may be stuck in, in places where they're too wrapped up in themselves can be very challenging. Those Aries people, you know, how do we challenge and deal with someone who's like, you know, so, you know, wrapped up in their own thing that they are making those waves. So, but we have a lot of energy on our side to help steer people like that back in and still honor their independence and get them to become more sensitive to the group and to their relationships with others. I really think this is a potent, potent lunar eclipse for working with relationships and knowing what you want, knowing what you want to get away from, knowing what you want to get towards. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to X those people out of your life that you want to get away from completely, but it's redefining that and being like really clear about, you know, what you're going to allow them to do in your life and where you want to go. And if they, you know, want to come with you, still have that ability to allow them to do that too. But this is a very potent, potent one. So just a couple other little things I wanted to mention. On Wednesday, there's a couple of couple aspects that are a little tricky. Jupiter is Quincunx, the south node, and Mars is semi-square Chiron. And, you know, and, and so this, the Jupiter South Node one in particular may expose certain people within a group context to them um, using the group mainly for their own benefit or gain. And, and that can be like kind of seen in this situation and, and can create some um, disharmony within the group and, and and it's kind of obvious like to the other people in the group and stuff or it might even be just in a relationship right but then with the mars semi square chiron it's showing that the individual who's in that energy zone of doing that of like you know mainly in, involved with others for their own benefit basically more than in any other reason is that they're going to hurt themselves they're going to be very frustrated by like the reaction they get and they could stain their reputation. You know, they could even, you know, with a Mars semi square Chiron, you can even make a very poor decision impulsively out of anger or irritation, not getting what you want and injure yourself even, or set yourself up for an accident or some kind of illness because you weaken yourself. So very kind of a little bit of a tricky day there, you know, just like, you know, checking in with that and what does a group do when they see someone is be using them like how do they adjust to that is that question of that quincunx it's like what are you what are you going to do is it something you've been ignoring how does the group take that on now you know so very interesting there and then the one other aspect i wanted to mention this week we're going to venus again and it's on thursday venus is sextiling uranus and this is a very exciting fun happy kind of relationship type um, aspect also because it brings new experiences into our life and it many times is through new people or people like if we are letting new people in right or developing um, deeper relationships with people we kind of knew so before that but it's getting now deeper this is the kind of thing where they're bringing us stimulation they're bringing us excitement they're making us really happy about life and what the possibilities are and there is a respect for that aries individualism too with uranus this is like you be who you want i'll be who i want we meet in the middle and we can tolerate one another and we can make arrangements, we can make agreements. A lot of times they may be just short term with Venus, Sextile, Uranus, but they can bring in 
like a lot of like new information to us that's really exciting gets us excited it's just a good day to go out and do something different also it also can bring us short-term opportunities to make money some uh, uh, some money really quickly possibly it may not be a lot of money it may just boom like some opportunity may come up out of the blue and you get onto it and you, you get some payback right away but it may not be something that you, that's going to keep going on it's kind of like one of those one-off shots and then it also stimulates our creativity in new ways where we're, we we find new ways of expressing our art, our creativity, uh, we may get into even alternative forms of art, things like that. So a very interesting day there. But this this week is definitely driven by that full moon lunar eclipse. So next week we go into April and it's the end. In fact, it's happening now. I should mention that Mercury is in its shadow already of the retrograde, right? So things are going to start slowing down and believe it or not, the very first day of April, Mercury goes retrograde on April Fools. And you know, Mercury is the jester of the of the uh, planet. So, you know, we're going to have to, you know, on April Fools, he's, he's going to get us back into retrograde season starts up again. And he will be the first one. And we'll, you know, we'll be slamming some brakes. And it'll be in Aries, too. So it's going to make the individual have to slow down again. Venus is also going to go into Aries next week and not be as happy as she is in Pisces. You know, Venus, that's actually a weak sign for Venus to be in. And especially with Mercury retrograde, there's going to be some, you know, struggling for Venus in, in Aries. And then the other thing, um, I'll look at the month of April next week, too. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do the full monthly with the weekly. So... I really think, you know, you guys who know me and have been following me for a while, you know, this is one of those weeks where you can really bring some really great creative change into your life through relationships and adjust old ones, bring in new ones, bring in a lot of creativity, stimulates the ideals of you want, but yet still brings stability in there and bring lots of opportunities. There's so many things lining up, you know, for me, it really looks like one of those perfect storms in a positive direction. So, you know, just think that. And remember, the lunar eclipse gives us that power that when we are thinking of things, that we can create those things in the real world. And so, and then when we get to that solar eclipse in April, that one can be a little bit more driven from the outside. So we'll talk about that. And of course, everybody's talking about that one because it's going to be a full-on eclipse for a big part of the central part of the U.S. anyway. So anyway, we'll get into that one in a couple weeks. Next week, the month of April, Mercury retrograde, Venus into Aries. All right, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. I would really appreciate your support um, right now by you passing the link on to somebody else. And when you're ready for that reading, hitting me up for it, um, I would really appreciate that. If you'd like to give a donation, people have been really good about that too. You know who you are. My Venmo handle is at the symbol at, you know, the A with the circle. And then it's Matthew, once again, capital M, two T's in the middle, and then put a hyphen a hyphen in the middle, not at the bottom, and then Lawton, capital L A U T E N. No amount is too small. Really appreciate anybody who can give anything um, to help the blog keep going. I'm going to have some new ideas too. And once Mercury retrogrades over for the blog, that'll be like exciting for some of you guys, I think. And, you know, so look forward to that afterwards. I always use my timing with astrology. And remember, all kinds of charts. I do all kinds of charts. Get on my website, www.astrologicalwinds.com. If you haven't checked it out yet, check it out. I have an earth and sky calendar for every week in there that tells you, you know, the different holidays um, from the from past and, and different stuff and going on in the sky. Um, all of my menu is in there. I'll work with you with prices if it's beyond what you can afford. You know, um, if you have a group looking for some kind of thing, you need some classes. So check the website out, you know, and I'll keep adding content to it. 
and you know um you know become a follower on youtube become a follower on instagram websites www.astrologicalwinds.com i appreciate you all very deeply and i will see you all next week and let's see how we can work with that eclipse this week